Hey guys, Budget Jedi here with a ramble vlog about props. Today will not be a diorama build video at all. I just want to talk about my favorite places to get 112 scale accessories, weapons, as well as some customizers in the community that offer them. And I'm going to start by basically showing off some awesome Marvel Legends 6 inch figure pickups. First fun grab I want to talk about is the Marvel Legends Deadpool. This came out late in 2016. Comes with all these extra weapons, two swords, a grenade launcher, as well as with a uh, boxing glove at the end. Very funny. You guys might have noticed I repainted the guns. I'm not familiar with what gun this is. So if anybody is familiar, let me know what gun that's supposed to be. But I painted that black and I painted some of his uh, gun silver. Not that different from the original. So first thing I bought for him was this 112 scale Maisto Red Vespa. You can find this on eBay for 12 bucks. And it's a very, very fun addition to Deadpool because it's in 112 scale. So Deadpool totally fits on it. And you can put all sorts of different stickers on it. Um, Deadpool logo right there. And it looks very similar to the Vespa that he had in the comics. Now Deadpool comes with this extra head that's unmasked. But he also comes with this half unmasked head. Which is a really, really cool addition. I got this from a site called clayornotcustoms.com. And uh, you guys got to check it out. I will be mentioning it again later on in this video. But that's a great site to get all these different 112 scale weapons and Marvel Legends heads and customizable parts. Here's a bit of customization that I did uh, on Deadpool's grenade launcher. I wanted to pose him as if he was shooting something. And so what I did was I took my glue gun and I put bulbs on top of bulbs of glue using my glue gun. It's a very simple process. Just basically wait for one bulb to harden and then put another one on top of it. And I painted the whole thing white and a little bit of gray. And on so. the other end, what I did was I took a short piece of stick. Anything will do, like even a toothpick would do. And I put, yet again, a lot of glue on top of it. So that it looks like it's the trail of something he's shooting out. This particular rocket I got from an import item called 112 Armory and uh, you can put it on it here and make it look like as if he was launching something. So a closer look here for you guys you can see that that's nothing but just a glue part from the glue gun. Uh, and you know I can take this off snap it right off and stick something else on there and it works. I actually made another one that was blank. See, I had made a blank one here so that it, I can make it look like he's shooting out, for example, a rubber chicken. There it looks like he's shooting up a rubber chicken. And the rubber chicken is a very funny and fitting crazy part for Deadpool, obviously. Uh, you can find this on eBay under the name of Itsy Bitsy, I think, Rubber Chicken. And I think they sell like a pack of 12 of them for $15. Deadpool also comes with these extra tacos because obviously he loves tacos. Uh, but I got these extra tacos. You can buy these casts of the tacos, painted or unpainted, from Paint Samurai Customs on Facebook. Make sure you check him out. I will be mentioning him again. That's one of my... Uh, favorite places to get extra parts and accessories for my figures. Next up is the Marvel Legends Wolverine. A very cool figure and very articulated. Um, if you're a fan of X-Men, you gotta have them. The first thing I found for him are these metal claws. Check this out, guys. I mean, he comes with plastic claws that are removable. But I found this seller online in Facebook, actually, by the name of Rory Winsell. So big thanks to Rory Wenzel for selling these affordable real metal claws for Wolverine. Uh, they completely replace the plastic ones and they look nice and shiny. Uh, the only thing is if you have kids around, don't have this nearby because these are very sharp. So the other part for Wolverine that you guys got to see is this very cool unmasked Logan head. This is an unmasked Logan head with a cigar that was sculpted by Sculptor Shelf. Be sure to check out Sculptor Shelf page. Sculptor Shelf is an individual who is very talented and he sculpts his own heads and uh, possibly other Marvel Legends uh, parts as well. 
Um, but he'll do a run where he gets these pre, uh, pre-orders in. And then that would be the only batch he would do. So a lot of his sculpts are limited batch, um, as originals at least. And uh, he sells them either painted or unpainted. Now I got this one unpainted, but it was painted by another customizer by the name of Christopher Serda. So if you guys ever need any custom work done, um, actually Chris Serda also goes by the name of Masterpiece Customs. He does usually full uh, body or full figures as uh, commissions. But if you need also paint work, you might want to reach out to Christopher Serda. Very, very great, uh, talented guy. Here's the Logan head with the Wolverine body. Looks absolutely cool and menacing. I'm very glad I was able to get this from Sculpture Shelf. So huge thanks to Sculpture Shelf and Christopher Serda for making this happen. And finally, we got the Build-A-Figure Juggernaut. Very cool figure from this wave. Very heavy. Uh, the head's not all that impressive. Uh, it's a little small for my taste and uh, the face doesn't look that great. Luckily, I was able to buy this customized cast and painted head from Paint Samurai Customs. This, I believe this is a uh, painted cast of a Marvel Select Juggernaut head that um, has been customized so that it can fit the peg of this Marvel Legends one. Um, if you can see it here, it looks a lot better. Um, I think the size works a lot better as well, but at the same time, it's got the same articulation that you would have uh, with the old head anyway. So Okay guys, now I'm going to ramble a lot about my accessories, weapons, and this diorama that I made to display all of these accessories. Now the reason I didn't make this video a diorama build video is because the diorama itself is very simple. There's no new tricks, no new methods that I used. It's simply just using leftover materials that I have. Starting with the walls here, uh, you can see that it's basically leftover insulation materials that I've used in the past and I slapped them all together it's basically four or five pieces uh, glued them together using a glue gun on top of this big base here and for the paint of course I just used simple cheap acrylic gray paint that's all it was now when it comes to the front of the diorama I wanted to spice things up by making it look like it's some sort of hidden room. And so what I did here, I was also trying to use up some of my project bricks. Some of you might know that I used um, these project bricks. I bought a whole box of it for a Venom vs. Uh, Spider-Man diorama. And I was just trying to use up more bricks. And so what I did here was I put walls on the left and right and an extra wall on the back to make it seem like this extra wall would close in on the, uh, the front. But uh, what I did here was I kept the original shape of the insulation foam. Like when you buy it in store, it actually has this little wedge in the front. And on the opposite side of it, it's got this cavity where it can like snap into each other. And that's the way they manufactured it. So I just kind of kept that shape, colored it gray and, uh, you know, put pieces of it there. Kind of like uh, a cement wall would look. And uh, what I did here was I cut it cut into some lines to make it look like there's a track here as well as um, I printed some hazard taping uh, I don't know what you call this but like a warning uh, label I guess also um, stickers down here I printed it in black and white and I used uh, yellow highlighters and red markers to make it look like it's got color on it but as you can see like it's not really that great of a job but I didn't want to bother with too much of the detail but so anyway, that's what it looks like. That's the front of the uh, the whole diorama. All right, so now I'm going to talk about the elements that I used inside. Uh, the main element, obviously, is the actual uh, weapon mount. And for that is a combination of balsa wood, which you can see here. This is basically a piece of balsa stick. You can buy it from any uh, craft store. Very cheap. And in the back there is actually foam board. You can buy foam board for a dollar. For a huge piece of it from any CVS or Walgreens. Uh, you can see here I did not finish painting the uh, foam board. And on top of the foam board I used plastic grating. And it looks like this when you buy it. 
I found this at Michael's for about 70 cents per sheet. And I believe it comes in like all sorts of different colors, you know, green, red, white, black. I bought some white ones and basically uh, spray painted it with silver. So all of this was basically spray painted with silver color and then glued onto each other using glue gun. The weapons themselves were mounted using um, actually rubber cement. And for some of the heavier ones, like ones that wouldn't stick well, I used simple glue gun. Glue gun is great on plastic weapons because you can just peel them off after and they don't do any damage at all. A couple of other accessories I want to mention. This chair um, is in the 112 scale and it came from, I think, um, a Morpheus figure from the Matrix line. One of the manufacturers in China, I think, lists them on eBay. Uh, I got that one for 12 bucks, so you can find it on eBay, and I'll try to put the link on screen if I can find it. And over here, you can see a pallet on the floor. I made this one. You guys have to refer back to my Deadpool uh, diorama that involves uh, Punisher as well. That's an older video of mine. So I made that by hand using craft sticks. And up here, you can see like a double flat screen. Now, that's actually bought from China as well. Um, and I actually have an extra here. You can buy this on eBay, and I believe it was $2 or $3, and it comes with this flat screen, which is really cool. Um, no, no pictures on it, just a plastic on the top, and it comes with this extra uh, remote with it. So what I did was I took out the bottom, and I mounted both screens pretty much using glue gun. You can see actually the pink insulation material there um, one of them I decided to leave it as blank and the other I just printed you know on my black and white printer some screens of uh, camera feeds and put it there so it looks like it's on and you know obviously I've got the two remotes there now off to the side here you can see like there's a homemade metallic shelf let me just get this guy out of here um, this metallic shelf that I made is supposed to be like a gun rack or a gun uh, locker and what that is is actually one of these this is what's called a plastic jewelry box some people also call them a, a bait and tackle box and you know you could buy it on eBay I think for uh, e anywhere from two to four dollars and you can, you know, they're great. You can use them to store extra accessories, heads for your figures. They come with these slots. You can put the separators in there. So all I did was I took one side of it, like I cut, I cut the, uh, the lid, and I spray painted it with a metallic color. And actually, I used the lid as well as part of this table. I made a makeshift table with some balsa wood here on the bottom. So that's all I did to make it look like uh, there's some sort of um, weapons locker in there. And uh, I could put in, you know, I put in like a lot of my different accessories down there to make it look cool. Here's a typical display that I would do in a diorama like this. Uh, this is Marvel Legends Agent Coulson with two customized Marvel Legends SWAT guys made by B Customs. Uh, and if you notice, if you look closely, you may notice that uh, Coulson is also customized in terms of his uh, head sculpt. That was made by Glassman Customs, and Glassman Customs is a customizer that sells cast uh, Marvel Legends heads of characters you may see in Marvel movies, uh, Star Wars, or even real life. He also offers like uh, the cast shrinking and enlarging services, and also painting for the heads you actually purchase. A uh, very fun site if you love to customize or create your own figures. So I put the link in the description. Make sure to check them out. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, some of the props and weapons that I have in here. First thing is this little table that has these highly detailed handguns. Um, every time you see something that's really highly detailed in my diorama, it's usually made by either uh, Resaurus. That's a company that made this line called Special Forces. Make sure to check them out. Or 112 Little Armory. Little Armory is basically a series of model kits made by Tomatech in Japan. So it's an import item. You can easily purchase them from import sites or even eBay. They have a huge range of weapons. Super highly detailed, even down to the bullets. 
Down on the floor here, you'll see a very nice uh, kind of case containing a sniper rifle setup. That actually came with this figure by NECA called Agent 47. Uh, it's more of a figurine or a statue, not really an action figure, but uh, NECA always makes very highly detailed accessories. So let me show you guys. It came, this actual figure came with not only these uh, sniper rifle with attachments, but also up here, he came with this uh, machine gun with all these numerous attachments on it. So I just kind of displayed it, you know, I kind of glued it on there to make a display. It also came with this um, nice uh, shotgun back here. So it's a very, very nice piece to own. Um, what I did here was I took one of the cases that I bought from a Dollar Tree. You know, Dollar Tree sometimes will have uh, this these cheap $1 army figures. It's empty inside. And so what I did was I put this piece of foam. It's a simple piece of foam where I can press all these attachments in there and I can take them out anytime I want it. And on the other side, I put the actual uh, sniper rifle with the plastic grit that I was talking about earlier, which um, I bought from Michaels. And that's all it is. I mean, obviously it's not accurate. Um, it doesn't close, but it makes it for a pretty good display. Now I want to show you some of the weapons that I mounted on here. They're from all over the place, uh, but I do want to mention that uh, the two sites that I buy from are pretty much Casting Cave, that's on eCrater, as well as ClayOrNotCustoms.com. Uh, these are basically both sites that uh, sell resin casts of weaponry and body parts in the 112 scale at pretty much affordable prices as well. So uh, it's really great if you want to customize your figures or your weapons here and there. Uh, make sure you check them out. Links will be below. All right, let's start with this uh, shotgun section down here. Uh, these ones on uh, the end here and stacked. Uh, originally from Marvel Legends Punisher, I believe. And uh, you can buy cast of them from either Casting Cave or Clay or Not Customs. Same with these. I believe these are all cast as well. Uh, that's from Agent 47. That one is a special shotgun from... Uh, I believe Resident Evil Leon Kennedy uh, by NECA as well. They always make very highly detailed accessories. Uh, this shot uh, sawed off shotgun, excuse me, is uh, probably from uh, Clay or Not Customs. Now up here we've got uh, a bunch of sniper rifle looking weapons. Starting from the bottom here, this is from uh, Marvel Legends Toy Biz uh, Punisher. And these three above it is from a uh, more modern uh, Marvel Legends uh, Punisher by Hasbro. These two are from a line called McFarlane's Military. Uh, they got tons of very highly detailed soldiers and uh, military figures with weapons that um, are highly detailed as well. And these two, these two black ones here are from uh, Dollar Tree. Those are Dollar Tree weapons. Um, I just kind of put them there. And up here, I believe this was like a gift from a trade. Uh, I believe that's from Marvel Select Winter Soldier. That's a seven inch figure. All right, moving to the right of it. Uh, we've got the uh, automatic weapon section here. Right on top, I got the two rifles from uh, Marvel Legends, Nick Fury. And uh, on the left here, got some really highly detailed rifles, I believe from McFarlane's military. And right down here, to the right, I've got a bunch of Resaurus uh, Special Forces weapons. If you look up Resaurus Special Forces, you'll find a bunch of like, uh, you know, army figures with these kind of weapons, but they do sell packs of just the weapons and accessories as well. Uh, moving down here, I've got some casts from Clay or Not Customs, uh, a bunch of these uh, one handed machine guns. Uh, I believe these are from NECA figures as well as. Uh, cats from Casting Cave. Um, down here I've got an import weapon that I don't remember the name. I'll put it on screen. Uh, Moving on down here in these columns we have all casts from uh, I believe Casting Cave. And onto the right here you've I've talked about this one. This is from Agent 47. This one is from Leon Kennedy figure from NECA. Uh, this one comes from another NECA figure named Hunk. Another you know resident Evil series figure, and this one is an is a NECA one-handed uh, machine gun uh, from the Sin City line. Now moving on to the next section, I've got a couple of uh, mixed weapons here. On top, I have a 
rocket launcher that's actually a cast from Casting Cave. Uh, to the right of it is a, a riot gun of some sort from the Marvel Legends Deadpool. Uh, this is a little armory weapon. Uh, these two AR uh, looking machine guns or assault rifles are from uh, Clay or Not Customs. Uh, this is also an import gun. I don't remember the name. I'll put it on screen. And I've got a, a pair of uh, arrows and a bow from actually a Buffy the Vampire Slayer figure. So I'll put the name on screen when I remember it. All right, down here I've got the handgun section. On the very left here, this left section are pretty common handguns. You can either find them for with uh, Marvel Legends figures, or you can find them on sites like Star Wars Geek Customs. That's a store on um, eBay. Make sure you check them out. They down here in the middle, I've got some NECA weapons, um, a couple of uh, dollhouse miniatures, actually. If you can find these at uh, stores like Michael or craft stores. Uh, this one is a Dollar Tree figure. And uh, down here, you, we've got a couple of guns that actually originally came from a Marvel Legends Deadpool, and then they were cast by uh, Casting Cave. Now down on the side here, we've got a bunch of casts as well as some original Resaurus. So the original Resaurus is down here with detachable silencers. They look very cool. Uh, these look similar, but I don't believe they're the same thing. These are casts bought from Clay or Not Customs. And some of these are bought from Casting Cave as well as this one. Down here, I put some stuff that um, I have left over. These are the little armory riot shields. Uh, a bunch of little trinkets from G.I. Joe, and uh, these handcuffs are from, uh, I guess, a Mattel wrestling figure. And uh, this big knife and small knife you can find on Casting Cave. Now moving on, we've got the fully automatic section here. Uh, up here, I believe, this is, I believe, a $1 figure uh, from Dollar Tree. Uh, this is from the NECA Leon Kennedy. Moving down here, we've got these two nice-looking weapons from McFarland's Military. And uh, we've got a very nice, uh, modern-looking import weapon there, I believe. I got that from uh, Casting Cave. And down here, we've got some nice-looking rifles from, actually, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures. I, I believe it was the recent, like, foot soldiers that, uh, that came out. Uh, here on the left, we've got some Toy Biz uh, M16s from a Punisher figure, and I'm pretty sure those are casts as well. And uh, down here, we've got some bigger weapons that came from my NECA John Matrix uh, figure or Commando. Down here, some more McFarland's Military. Uh, up here, this one is Resaurus. Uh, more NECA, and finally, some more Resaurus and NECA on the bottom there. Finally down here, if you notice, I've got this uh, red suitcase. This actually has money in it. It's got removable money in 112 scale. Uh, very cool piece from a NECA figure by the name of Beatrix. Uh, I believe this is uh, a Kill Bill figure. So it's a very nice addition. And I actually, somebody told me that you can remove the whole pack of money in there. And, uh, you know, you can use the suitcase as empty. So that's a very cool uh, little piece that I like to keep around. Finally, I'm going to try to give you guys a closer look at this little locker thingy that I made. Uh, down here, I've got an accessory from Resaurus. And again, if you look up Resaurus Special Forces, it will come out like on eBay, a lot of different stuff. Uh, this is a part from my McFarland's military. Up here, you've got individual uh, grenade for the grenade launchers from the little armory line. Uh, some of these bigger grenades with the signs on them is from NECA, from my NECA Leon Kennedy. And then I've got some smaller grenades here from, I don't know if you can see that, grenades from the uh, Resaurus line. Up here, actually, these are grenades that you can buy from Casting Cave. And I've got some random camera stuff from, I, I believe, WWE figures. Up there, I've got my little armory sniper rifle, uh, more grenades and uh, medical sprays, Resaurus gun over there, and Resaurus grenade over here, as well as uh, a custom cast from Clay or Not Customs down there. 
So that's pretty much it. Right here on this table, I've got uh, this nice looking briefcase that I put uh, from a WWE figure. You could actually buy this from a popular WWE site that sells only accessories for Mattel wrestling figures. Uh, in this case, I put a pair of handcuffs from a NECA uh, Sin City figure, as well as a random gun. And uh, that little nice looking vest is from the Resaurus line. So, I think that's pretty much everything that's in here. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. I will try to answer them if they're not already covered in the video. Okay guys, pretty much I think I've covered everything in this diorama. You know, very simple concept, but just kind of like a nice background to make for like a lot of figures out there. Any figures that has weapons could fit with this kind of diorama. But uh, before I go, I really have to mention a really impressive diorama that I came across that is very similar to this, but made for uh, six inch Star Wars figures. And that's by Sammy Maxwell on Facebook. Made a simple and super impressive armory room out of like foam a few sticks and i think maybe parts from a mattel wrestling figure set anyway maxi lopez 1982 is his youtube page and the link to this diorama is on the screen please click on it make sure you check it out uh other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you guys on the next one